Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm Chris Quellen. Uh I uh, work at a company called Thought Industries. Uh, I'm the CTO there, but it's kind of a joke because there's like <laughs> two of us. Some guy just started Monday, so there's three developers and like four business guys. So uh, title's a bit of a joke. Um, but what Thought Industries does is uh, we allow you to create and sell online schools. Uh, it's pretty cool. You can check us out at thoughtindustries.com. Um, so we built pretty large app uh, with two guys. It's me and a front-end guy. Uh, we have all sorts of templates, components, routes, models, controllers, and views. Um, so I've learned uh, a couple things doing all that, uh, which I'd share with you right now. Uh, first up is Ember Data, uh, which I've been struggling with lately. So I'm not happy too much with it right now. But overall, I don't want to discount what Igor uh, and Gang are doing there. I think they're really doing some really great complicated stuff. Uh, but overall, I think it's really great for uh, simple use cases. But it's kind of still the Wild West. It's not nearly the same with Ember as far as uh, breaking changes are concerned. Uh, there are a lot of breaking changes in every beta release that there is. Um, it's really a very steep upgrade path. We're stuck right now on beta 8, and they're all the way up to beta 11 right now. And I tried to uh, spend a couple hours yesterday and over the last month trying to upgrade slowly, uh, but I've been failing pretty miserably. I'm just hitting a bunch of different Ember bugs, uh, which sucks. But it used to be a lot worse. Uh, so the place it's in right now I think is really great. Uh, and I think it is slowly getting better and better, but it's still kind of rough. And I don't know if there are really better options out there. Uh, I've been looking at Ember Orbit. I believe, Gordon, you have uh, EPF. Is that right? Uh, which I haven't looked at too much. But there are definitely alternatives out there uh, that I think might be worth checking out at this point in time. Uh, this kind of sums up my feelings about Ember data. Uh, it is. Uh, this is just an issue that was opened up six days ago. Uh, you can go check out. It just says pretty much beta 11 breaks quite a lot of app side code. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> upgrade path is not there slash is really steep. Um, if you are going to use Ember data, uh, the only real recommendation I have is that you should try to sideload your data uh, instead of embed it. So this is an example of embedded data here, where you can see there's a user, and there's a profile here, which is kind of embedded in the response. And there could be an array of comments, as an example. Um, and uh, this in Ember data right now is pretty rough. Uh, this is what I naturally gravita gravitated towards when I was uh, first trying out Ember data. And I found it was really buggy and overall not what Ember data wanted you to do. Ember data wants you to do this kind of thing, where you can see the user model is here, and the comments in the profile have been split out into separate. Uh, it's basically sideloaded, is what they call it. Um, so do that if you can. Uh, a little side note, RethinkDB, which is, a, I think, a really cool database, makes this kind of transformation really easy. Regardless of how you're storing it in the back end, you can display it for Ember data in this way really, really easily. Um, as far as the router concerned, uh, the router is concerned that it's really the first spot that I start at whenever I'm trying to basically, if I want to add something to the app, I'm like, OK, what does the URL look like? Um, so that's where I start. And uh, basically, I think one of the most powerful parts of Ember, uh, definitely also one of the most complicated parts. Um, the key things I think to understand are really uh, when uh, there are a whole lot of hooks, uh, like model and setup controller and all sorts of things like that. And um, they are, it's really important, I think, to understand when they get fired, when they don't get fired, and the order that they get fired in. And uh, I also think it's really important to, how to understand how to structure the router as far as um, when to use resource versus when to use route, and when to nest your resources. Uh, and you can also nest routes these days, which is pretty cool and something I haven't done. That's a more recent development. Um, uh, as far as controllers are concerned, I see uh, a lot of people uh, that I've tried to been teaching Ember uh, switching up object controller and array controller and not really understanding when to use uh, what. So I think it's really important to really get that down, really understand what an object controller is, what an array controller is, and how that relates to your model. 
Uh, and the way we've been doing it is uh, generally we put stateful actions here, uh, something like uh, if you enter uh, an editing state, uh, something that isn't really persisted to uh, the back end. And if it is persisted to the back end, I generally move that action to the route. Ember itself doesn't really, it allows you to do both, but that's what we found works the best for us. Um, this is another thing that I've seen a lot of code online. I look at blog posts a lot and things like that. I see a lot of people uh, doing this kind of thing where they'll uh, want to do something on like did uh, insert element or init or any of these uh, hooks provided by Ember. Um, this is an example that just calls super and sets inserted to true on, let's say, a component, uh, for example. And uh, the issues with this is really easy to forget uh, the super line, and then your app breaks, and you're like, I don't really understand what's going on uh, sometimes, especially if you forget it on init or something like that. Uh, it's not really clear, I think, what the function is doing, whereas something like this, uh, I think, is much better, where you can basically um, name the function, which I think is really nice. You can see it's named. Mark is inserted right there, and then you just throw on did insert element at the end, and then there's no need for super at all, which I think is really great. Um, computer properties overall, I think they're super great. I think you should really take a lot of time learning what they are, what they do, uh, how they work, um, and, and use them all the time. Uh, the only gotchas I'd say are don't forget uh, if you're uh, doing a computer property on an array, you need to use at each or the little square braces. Uh, I forget those myself. I've seen a lot of other people just forget them and then wonder why your computer property is not working. Uh, computer properties also have setters, which I don't know if you guys have used uh, very often or not. Uh, but right now, they're a little cray cray. And I would recommend uh, avoiding them entirely uh, if you can. Uh, observers. Uh, so these things, I don't know, these are just one of those things that looks really cool and really powerful, but overall uh, we found that they're really loosey-goosey. And w what I mean by that is that uh, you really don't know where this thing has been changed from and why this thing is firing. Uh, just kind of like, oh, it fired. Uh, and you really don't, it's really separated from everything else. Uh, there's no clear path as far as why this thing has changed, so why this uh, observer is firing. Um, so I found it really, really unpredictable. And they usually fire super early, way earlier than I want them to. And they fire uh, much, much more often than I expect. Uh, usually if something becomes null for like, even for an instant, and then becomes like fulfilled, um, then it will fire for the null and for the fulfilled. So you need to, I don't know. I would basically, I would try to avoid them if you can, uh, and use computer properties or actions, depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, but really, sometimes they're entirely unavoidable, so you just kind of have to live with it. Um, components, uh, they're really great. Uh, I really don't have any negatives at all. I think you really need to shove everything you can in a component. Uh, so we do a lot of this kind of thing. Uh, you can see there's just a whole series of nested components here. Uh, and this works really, really great for us. Um, Views, overall, we don't really use them at all. We use it for setting like a class name on a container. Uh, but other than that, I would use a component instead. Uh, if you recall in the first slide, we had uh, eight total views. That's so really, really not used at all. We have hundreds of components in comparison. Um, templates, uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, I just read that this is deprecated in Ember 2.0. Um, Basically, if you're using an each uh, like this, you can see here how there's no, basically, if you don't provide a variable name, it will change the context of everything within the each. Uh, so this first name and last name is coming directly off of each user. Uh, and this is, I think it's really hard to tell what the context is, and this is deprecated. So instead, try to do something like this, and you should be a lot happier. Uh, and you won't run into any deprecation in Ember 2.0, which is great. Um, as far as debugging Ember is concerned, uh, I found that just throwing a debugger line in there to see what's up uh, really, really helps. Uh, I've also found that switching between uh, Firefox and Chrome especially uh, can give you kind of wildly different uh, error messages. And I thought that uh, 
Oh no, either or. Sometimes I'm in Chrome and I'm I'm getting an error and it doesn't make any sense to me. But then I go over to switch to Firefox. I'm like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, especially when it comes to undefined and things like that. Uh, so just try switching between them both, and you should do you should do pretty well. Uh, don't be afraid to just dig into the source code. Uh, dig into the source of Ember, Ember data a lot. You should really try to figure out and just litter it with like console logs um, just to see what's up and why I'm running into this issue. Uh, a lot of people love the Ember inspector. I've never found much use of it myself, but I think it's worth checking out and playing with um, for sure. Uh, one, I think, interesting thing that's unique to Ember apps that we've run into uh, in production is that uh, we, you know, we get a log whenever an error occurs. And basically what we've seen is we try to reproduce what the error was. And sometimes uh, when we're testing it you know, and when we're, when we're building the functionality, uh, everything works great. But if you go through and do it a certain way, a very, very specific way, or like enter the same controller twice, for example, uh, you can reproduce the error that way, uh, which I thought was interesting and kind of different than a lot of uh, more server-side apps. Um, so that's it. I have a demo on now. I can show you the product that we're doing. Uh, if I can um, exit out of this mode. <laughs> uh, no? How do I exit? Uh, I can't see that top corner. Con control command F. There we go. All right, cool. Um, Cool. Uh, yeah. So here is our application. This is just one example. This is a online cooking school uh, that Taste of Home built. Um, you can see we have uh, this is called the micro site or the public site, which is basically just like a home page, and uh, there's uh, course pages, and um, there's a course catalog and things like that, support pages and other things. Uh, Here's another example. This is a craft beer and brewer who has an online, uh, uh, basically how to brew beer online, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, same kind of idea. You can kind of see how they look vaguely different from each other. Um, they're all fairly customizable. Uh, here's a, uh, it's a parenting and like, uh, you know, uh, birthing classes online. Uh, so there's kind of a wide range of different uh, people that we have on the site, which I think is really interesting. Um, here's one about uh, tea uh, that just launched last week. I really don't understand what it is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it sure is uh, interesting. Uh, the learning view itself, uh, I can show you that. So this is where things get really interesting, I think. Um, so here's an example of the t Taste of Home, one of the Taste of Home schools. Uh, this is where it really gets all embery. Uh, so on page load, I'll refresh here, um, what we do is essentially load this whole course. And uh, right now, this course is tips, tricks, and techniques from the test kitchen. Um, so what we do in Ember Data is we load this whole, uh, basically, every single part of this course here. Um, and you can see how you can just click Next through, and everything works really great. Um, things like this, I think, are really cool with Ember that I can just, uh, for example, refresh this page, and that next session thing will still be there, uh, which I think is really great, uh, and something that I think you would forget about or just not do using something other than Ember. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, basically you can see a whole different bunch of different kinds of types of interactions that we built. Um, uh, this is a recipe, for example, of all sorts of little things uh, in here. Um, which I think, yeah, that was a slideshow back there. Uh, some pretty uh, interesting, cool stuff. And you can see how the page hasn't really refreshed at all, and everything just kind of pops in instantly, uh, which I think is really great. Uh, and I can show you. This is what the uh, data looks like. So when you load that page, this is uh, the endpoint that we're hitting. And essentially what we're doing with Ember Data is loading the main course itself. And then we're loading each lesson section and then all the different uh, lesson types, so videos, text, images, recipes, slideshows, and quizzes within this thing. Uh, and they're all just loaded um, all at once, uh, which I think is pretty cool. So this is like the recipe I was showing you, for example. Uh, and everything is very, very 
uh, side loaded. This is embedded in here, um, and all of the rest of these are all side loaded in here, um, which is pretty cool. So it's kind of a neat way of loading, I think, a whole course instead of loading individual pages um, all at once. So we know, you know, the user is going to be interested in this thing. So we're just going to give it to them all at once. Um, so I can show you the actual uh, building of a course, which is where things get really cool. So I'm an admin right now, just on a test uh, instance locally. Um, I can show you creating a course, for example. Uh, uh, so yeah, basically a course consists of many sections uh, and then lessons. And then there are pages underneath each lesson. Uh, so you see how it's kind of just really easy, I think, to build um, a course. Uh, and I think some of the cool things that Ember in particular allows us to do. So if I'm building a quiz here, for example, uh, um, and then uh, let's add another question here, maybe true false. Um, and then I think one of the really cool things is that, A, I don't know if you guys can see this, but down here is a miniature preview of the quiz that you're building uh, right there. Uh, it's very similar to, I don't know if you guys have built like a PowerPoint presentation. You can see the uh, little slides of your presentation. Uh, and I thought this was really, really cool and something that I don't think I could accomplish without Ember or at least another similar library. Um, and uh, one of the other really cool things that I can just click preview in the top right here, and it just pops in. And this is like exactly what the learner view looks like. Um, and you can actually just take the quiz right there and uh, see your results. And then you can also just go back and resume editing right there. Um, so I think overall that really, I don't know, just a nice, interesting way of building um, out a course. Um, I don't think I could have really done it without Ember uh, in this way. Um, but yeah, that's all I have. I don't know if you guys have any uh, questions for me. Yeah, so this is all just component driven. Uh, both this mini uh, preview and uh, the actual preview itself here. Uh, basically, we have a TI topic uh, component. And uh, with some CSS wizardry, you can shrink the display of that thing. Um, significantly uh, to do that. And then for this preview, it literally just renders, you know, TI topic uh, attached to the topic that you are building. Um, so it's essentially the same data in CSS? Uh, uh, yeah, for the, for the mini one? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's the exact same data. It's just, um, it's all data bound. So this is one topic you're dealing with. And down here is, again, the same topic. Um, and it's just shrunk with CSS. That's it, um, which is pretty cool, <laughs> I think. Um, anybody else? Yeah? Uh, yeah, this is Redactor, uh, which is a pretty OK WYSIWYG <laughs> text editor. Uh, I, I really wouldn't recommend it, uh, honestly. Uh, I mean, if all you want is text editing, great. And you don't want to customize it all, then use Redactor. I think it's the best out there. But if you actually want to customize it, uh, I don't know. Uh, don't use it. It's <laughs> my recommendation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this has been about six months. We've been working on this since uh, about March or so. Uh, I hired a guy in April uh, for the front end um, and taught him Ember. Uh, he actually went to Embercom. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so. That was that, and then uh, it's been working out pretty well so far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, an interesting question. Um, so we uh, currently we we are using a Node.js backend, and for uh, image and video uploading, we send that right back to the backend. Um, but uh, on the uh, for the user side of things, you can upload like a profile picture, and you can upload assignments and things like that. And that is shuttled off straight to S3. Um, 
which I think we want to do for videos and images too, which is they're built at separate times. So that's how it ended up going. We just added assignments and profile pictures. So. But yeah. Anybody else? Well, cool. Thanks so much. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely hit me up. I'll be right there. <laughs>